Hey guys, I'm going to do a quick video on a project that I did last week and it was replacing the console on my Sears Kenmore dishwasher. The model that I have, which is referenced in the subject of this video, um, has a couple flaws. Uh, the first one is just cosmetic. The buttons that are used to press the different uh, options, they're raised buttons and after time uh, they will they will crack. The, the buttons will still be functional when that happens, but they'll crack, particularly the start one. That's not a functional issue, but it's cosmetic and it's annoying. Um, the bigger issue is that after a few years, the console will quit working. Uh, initially, uh, when the uh, dishwasher was new, I had a service contract on it, which covered cosmetic things. And so before that contract expired, the start button was cracked. So I had uh, uh, the console replaced and the technician let me keep the original console as, as a spare since it was functional. The second console that was on there lasted probably a couple years before it started acting funny. The first thing that occurred was the, the buttons for the delayed start, uh, they would intermittently uh, come on and I would have to press the button to get those to go off and and then it would work. But then over time, the smart wash, which is normally what people will use by default, quit working. So I was still able to use the dishwasher. I would just pick a uh, normal wash or if indeed I had uh, something that was really tough, I'd use pots and pans but I could not use the, the smart button because it quit working. Over time, I, I had to press the normal button, go flip back and forth between it and other cycles to get that working. And then finally it got to where none of the LEDs would light on the console. At that, at that point, it was dead. What I did at that point was I put the console, the original console back on and that worked for um, gosh, I guess another year or two, uh, and then it started doing the same thing as the second console. And at that point, I had to go out and buy a new console and replace it. So since I've already uh, actually replaced it, this is going to be kind of an after the fact deal, hoping that I can give you some tips that'll help you when you do it, if you want to do it. Um, the first thing is, is that on the console, whenever you open up the dishwasher to get the console loose, there are actually six screws that you can see from the inside of the unit that uh, there's two on each side and then there's two that uh, are right in line with the handle. That's, there's only, so there's only six screws that hold it on and they use a Torx bit. Um, and I have a, a set of Torex uh, heads. Actually, this little set here covers a, a bunch of special uh, type of screw heads, particularly things that has a, a little raised indention that would keep you from even using a regular Torex. Very, very helpful little kit. Uh, this and a screwdriver that will take these type of bits is, is paid for itself uh, over and over again. So basically, that's, that's the first thing is that you just undo those six screws and after you do that you can just take the console and you tilt it back and lift up a little bit and it should then be be hanging free and you and you and the reason you have to tilt it in and lift it up is because there is a lip along the bottom edge so uh, 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 whenever you lift it up or unscrew it tilt it up lift up a little bit and there you go once you have it free, you will see that there are wires running from the actual handle. And then there are some wires that are connected to a circuit board on the side of the inside of the console. There's only one electrical connection that you have to disconnect, and that is this ribbon cable. This ribbon cable uh, connects into the circuit board and it has 14 pins. On my unit, the circuit board itself has 15 pins. So there's one pin that's not used. And on mine, it was the, the uh, 
pin that would be up toward the top of the console. Uh, but it is marked. It'll say pin one for 15 pin connection or 14 pin connection. You can kind of see that stenciled on the circuit board, but just pay very close attention when you go to un unconnect this ribbon cable that you see which pin is not used so you can be sure that you get this uh, plugged back in correctly. And when you go to unplug this, I would strongly recommend not grabbing the back of the ribbon cable like I have it held right now because you could actually rip the ribbon cable out of the connector. You want to grab it on each side or you can try to get your fingernail around the uh, front edge and work back and forth to get it off but do not grab by just the back of the free ribbon cable and yank it back. Uh, you, you do risk uh, hurting something that way. Once you get that disconnected the circuit board itself is in a plastic holder and my plastic holder was gray so it's easy you, it's easy to see it in there uh, on one side of that holder it has two tabs and they just sit in there uh, inside the the console there is no nothing um, that's uh, actually uh, keeping them in other than just this little lip on this side there is actually a little um, uh, place that clips that whole holder in place on the top and bottom. To unclip that, you do not grab the top of this and try to bend that back because you will break it. That's not the way it's intended to be uh, unplugged. What you do is you press in at the uh, area that's, that actually uh, holds it in place and it will depress and you don't have to do it too far. You depress it and then you pull up on the on the uh, holder a little bit to kind of keep that one depressed and then you repeat that process on the other side and once you have them both uh, undone you can just lift this side up and then move it over a little bit to, to unhook the other side and that then becomes free and it can just still sit there but it is now free for the actual handle there is a, a little catch on either side of the console. The handle itself has a little uh, ear that catches under that. So you just lift out on one side and unhook it, unhook it from the other side and then that is free. So the only electrical disconnection you have to make is this ribbon cable. You leave everything else connected and you those are free. Once you've done that, now you can take the um, console uh, away to install your new one. Prior to doing that, however, one other thing I want to show you up close is on the left hand side of the console, this is where hot air comes out whenever you're doing the heated dry. And see there's a little lip around this area. On the, con on the uh, actual dishwasher lid itself, there is a rectangular area that when you put this back in place it fits right in there and it has a foam type of gasket in there that's supposed to seal off all of the steam so it comes from the unit through these uh, holes and out. I've read different blogs that said they think the flaw in this dishwasher model is that some of the steam it actually can make its way uh, from with from out from that seal and that causes extra heat to start impacting the actual console and, and when you flip it over you can see that from where the hot air comes out and where the buttons start is very close and in both of mine since the smart wash is the one that stops working first that seems to be a reasonable theory so what I did and the fact that the the, the second console didn't last as long as the first one. And I think that's because whenever I took the console off and looked at that gasket, that foam stays smashed in from having been uh, smashed in making that seal over, uh, you know, a couple, three years. Uh, it, it has a, a dent where this actually makes contact and is pressed in. So what I did in an effort to try to make this last console, the third one, last longer, is what I did is I 
purchased, or actually I had it, I didn't, I, I have now bought some new, but what I had was this Permatech uh, Ultra Black um, uh, gasket maker is what it is, and it can be used for various things, and it has a a high temperature rating. They make a, a, a red version that has a higher temperature rating, but I was a little bit reluctant to use that because I wasn't sure if it'd be visible from the front. I don't think it would, but I had this anyway. So I said, well, I'm just gonna use black. So what I did was I took this black gasket maker and before I even put the new console on, I took my finger and rubbed it in around the gasket uh, where it is on the console side, excuse me, not on the console side, but the actual lid side. And then what I, I did was I actually took a screwdriver, actually I think it was this, this screwdriver, and I used it to lightly go around the four sides, basically restoring the gasket height to what it was. Basically, I, I was using this to fill in that indention made by the, the this little uh, area on the console because it is deep. And so my theory was that after I replaced it the first time, since it was already uh, dented when I put the new console on, it may or may not have been making a 100% uh, good seal. Maybe it is and maybe that's just a, a, a a fatal flaw of the design of this particular model. But what I did uh, to try to, if that was coming into play, is I filled it in, I used this to spread it out and I got it perfectly, uh, and, I, and I did it where I was mainly, the purpose was to fill in that permanent indention. I got it where it was a, a, you know as perfect as possible and then I let it sit for 24 hours because it takes 24 hours for this to permanently uh, seal. If I was using it for a real gasket sealer, I would have put the pieces together wet, but I didn't want to do that in case this one goes bad in the future. I didn't want this stuff because it will kind of adhere. It stays pliable, but it does also kind of adhere. I did not want it to adhere to the console, so I let it dry for a solid 24 hours. It was good and dry, but still very pliable, and then basically what I did was reverse the process. I took my new console, I took the handle, clipped it right back in place. It'll clip on either side here. I took the circuit board, I hooked it, let it hook up under there and snapped it in place. And then I took the ribbon cable from the new one, making sure that I uh, plugged it in the way the original one was. And that is all the the connectivity you have to do and then keep it in mind that this has a lip on the bottom i let the the uh this lip catch the the top of the um metal part of the outside of the lid and you bring it up into place pull your whole lid down where you can see everything and replace the six screws that you did to start with and the process is complete and of course, I didn't mention this at the first of the video, but before you start uh, anything, make sure 100% uh, that you turn off the breaker for your dishwasher so that you're not working with anything uh, live to avoid both, uh, both shocking yourself and damaging this circuit board. And, and just as a, um, one last additional tip, you know, one would think, you know, when this starts going bad um, or your, you know, your dishwasher quits working and it's acting flaky because of the console, though everything else appears to be working, when you pull this down and you see this got a circuit board, you, you know, you can have your doubts as to whether it could be the circuit board or the console. Because when you look at this, you go, okay, well, there's a ribbon cable. This little thing with the buttons on it is actually just, you know, uh, I think there's an adhesive on the back of this and they just pressed it on and that's, that's all it is. Now, 
Uh, so you think, okay, this thing is just making contacts, but I can only tell you from my experience now, having to uh, replace two bad ones, that indeed it's the console that goes bad. Uh, and in my case, it was the console that would go bad. It was not the circuit board and the rest of the dishwasher is just fine. So you can find these uh, on eBay um, anywhere from you know about $115 to $150. So they're not cheap, but it's a lot less than $500 for uh, a new dishwasher. And you can get them, a lot of them the sellers have it turned on where you can get the extended warranty. I did that this time, so if it, if it goes bad, hopefully um, you know it'll be even less to replace it again. But anyway, I hope that helps you if you got the same model. Uh, I think they make the same model, but without, mine has the uh, turbo wash feature, uh, turbo zone. Uh, I think they make the same dishwasher without the turbo zone. Uh, otherwise, it looks the same. So I suspect uh, replacing the console on it would be the exact same process. So anyway, it wasn't um, step by step as far as you actually watching me do it. Um, that would have been better. I get a little bit superstitious when doing, I'm doing things like that. I don't like to video it, some of these things when I'm doing them because I'm in, in case uh, uh, I'm just superstitious that that's going to make it not work. That's crazy, but I do it. <laughs> but so anyway, I still hope this will just be helpful if you just yours isn't working and you don't want to uh, spend you know five hundred dollars or more a lot you could go a lot more for a new dishwasher uh, because the dishwasher itself w works pretty good until you start having a console issue so anyway i hope you found this uh, video helpful that's all